Hey guys, how's it going? Speckham Auto is back with video number two this week. So you know, as as last time we did the uh, salvage yard walk around, this is going to be the second part of the salvage yard walk around with more cars and different things today. So sit back, get your popcorn, enjoy the show, and as always, have a good time here. Here's a pretty cool one that you've never seen in a long time. 1988 Mercedes 560 Coupe. Features a uh, radio alarm. Anti-theft system. Removing radio destroys electronics and sets off alarm. Interesting. I'm sure we got some Mercedes fans watching this. So, I thought I'd film it for you. And not just that plain Jane SUV from earlier. We're talking about something like this. We got this old headlight wiper on both sides. That's really cool. I wonder what was the concept behind it and why they stopped doing it, though. It's interesting. I want to see what's under the hood, though. That's the important part. Oh, shit. The hood holds itself up. Um, okay, I wasn't expecting that. that. That was light, too. Whoa. All right. Ooh, doggy, that's a big engine. Look at that. Oh, shit. Fuck, how many cylinders is this? I think it's a V8. It has to be a V8. That is insane. The engine size isn't what's intimidating. It's all the wires that's in there. That's crazy. You sh you know you wouldn't ex you wouldn't expect so many wires in an '80s car. Like holy shit, dude. Let's see if we can shut this. Perfect. She's shut and she's good. I already uh, cheated you guys a little bit. I already looked inside a little bit, and the interior is near perfect just kind of try to slap that back in and just imagine it Ooh, doggy that is a beautiful seat oh my god how does this work I bet it's electronic that's okay I'll sneak you guys back here look at the seats it smells so good in here too. It smells like pure leather. And look how low these mileage this mileage is. Look at that. 116,078 miles. Although some people might argue that that's high mileage for a Mercedes, but I don't know. I'm not an expert on Mercedes, so I don't have a lot of room to talk. Let's try to squeeze up in here real quick. Cause I wanna feel these seats. And my god, they're comfortable. I'm not going to shut the door just in case I get myself locked in here. Screw that. Uh, so we got our temperature, looks like. Oh, yeah, that's, that's neat. Look at that. It turns colors. Blue for cool, white for middle, red for hot. That is cool. And you got your push buttons for your climate. I have no idea what these buttons are. Um, <laughs> if somebody knows what these are, uh, drop a comment. Then we got our, uh, looks like heated seats, possibly. I don't know what this is. And then there's your other heated seat. Mercedes Benz, especially back in the day, had these really weird buttons and logos on the buttons. I'm guessing this is a child lock, maybe got your power windows power mirror uh, I have no idea what the hell this is I don't know I'm not a genius on this looks like uh, all the wood grain is uh, fading it's obviously fake plastic um, I'm not sure if it's dust but it looks like someone smoked in it at some point you got these things I think you can open and shut your vents. Hazards. 
I actually, it actually is pretty satisfying just touching the buttons and making them click. I don't know, it's just me. Get your parking brake release. Uh, headlights. Now this is your cruise control setting, or yeah, settings, controls, whatever you want to call it. Here's your ancient keyhole. Put your key in there, suck the car. There's so many different gauges in this, it's it's insane. You got your speedometer, you got your tachometer, you got a clock, oil pressure, gas, temperature, and I guess that's your fuel economy there. You got this nice little glove box with that padded interior. You have your fancy Mercedes-Benz roadside assistance. Oh yeah. I really love the seats in this, guys. Yeah, I'm wearing a face mask because Corona. Anyway. The dash, even the dash is really nice, minus a few little tiny cracks, but they're not really noticeable unless you focus on them. It looks like you got your reading lights and stuff. You got some messenger center right here. I don't know. You got your wind, uh, sunroof controls. You got your fancy visor. It's also maroon. It's just the way this car is. It's weird because you have the maroon. Then you have this like gray. And then you go way back there and it goes maroon again. It's unique. I'll tell you that much. I wonder if this is part of the car. Nope, they're Toyota. What is with people putting random car parts in random cars? Like, is that their, just their way of hiding their parts that they're going to be getting? Or This also feels very nice. I like the materials. Hard plastic there, so that's a minus, but whatever. But for the 80s, this is really, really nice. Daimler Bands. AG Stuttgart. I don't know. January of 86 is when this was built. Get a view of the trunk real quick. It's decent size and has very nice, uh, soft. Ooh, that's soft. I like that. That's very plush. Look. That's nice. I wish my trunk liner was like that. That's crazy. You got this warning label, it looks like. It's like half in another language. I'm guessing German or something. Because I'm pretty sure Mercedes is German. Got that soft material again, just throughout here. It's really nice. Get you one more quick view of the back seats. And... Oh, look at this. The back seat passengers has a power window on the sides too. And there's your sunroof again. This was a this was a nice car back in the day. Yeah, this was definitely electronic. I see this button on this side. You got power wire running through it, so yeah, it's it's electric. Damn, this is a nice car. I normally don't uh, drool over European cars, but this is pretty damn nice. Tell me what you guys think of this one. Here's another one that's uh not very often seen here is this is a uh, 2012 honda insight it's a hybrid much like the honda civic hybrid that i own the engine appears very different though uh, let's see see i don't like the hybrids in these because there's four spark plugs there and four spark plugs in the back. It's like it's a four cylinder, but you still have eight, eight, uh, eight spark plugs to change. It's very, very annoying. That's why I've never, <laughs> some of you might get mad, but I've never changed the spark plugs in my uh, hybrid. 
and I don't plan on it because it's a bitch. See, I like these hybrid headlights because they're blue inside. That's really cool. I've always had a thing for that. Uh, honestly, though, to compare the interior, I would compare it to a dollar store version of a Civic. And I'll kind of give you an idea as to why I say that here in a sec. Uh, so we got your steering wheel and all here. That's really nice. I kind of actually want this for my car. Holy crap. I know the buttons wouldn't work in it, but that's very nice. I like the leather wrap. It feels really, really nice. But you can't tell really much now, but... This car also had a two-tier style cluster, much like the 8th Gen Civics. So it's very, very similar in terms of that. So that's why I kind of compare it to a dollar store Civic. But you have cheaper interior materials including, but not limited to, the headliner and the visors. It all just looks and feels cheaper. Although this the seat feels pretty nice like pushing on the cushion and stuff. It feels pretty nice. Not bad but in terms of like door panels and headliner and just uh, In general like the dash. It's just in the door door handles too. They, they just it all feels cheaper I'm Not a fan of it, but You know It's I guess that's the price you pay for uh, being green, right? get a look real quick at the seat back seat here back seat looks pretty nice it's just being covered by all this junk here from different cars it looks like it has about the same amount of room as a Civic does just it has the big hatch so that's a plus on this one you can tell people were stripping away at parts on this one for sure I mean, you can tell for the most part it was uh, decently cared for in its existence. And I can almost guarantee that they already stripped the IMA system in it. Here's another look at the uh, dashboard and the center stack that somebody tore up. Like, why did they have to do that? See, look, on this you can tell it's a two-tier design. See, there's where the uh, tachometer and stuff would be, and that's your speedometer on the top little hole there. You got your radio, shifter, glove box, and then your random headrest that should be in the seat. So there's that. I almost dropped my camera, guys. Sorry. Yeah, it's just hard plastic. I don't like that. I'll just leave it at that. It's okay. Look, I know I filmed one of these before, and I'm probably always going to film one when I see one, but I'm sorry. It's... It's strictly for nostalgia reasons. Got a 01 Hyundai Tiburon here. And as you guys know, this was my very first car that I've ever owned. I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I have talked about it in previous videos before. But this one is in pretty clean shape. Minus a few normal wear spots that are on every Tiburon of this gen has 148,000 miles which is not bad on this uh, particular model got the cloth seats you got a uh, manual transmission you got your sunroof and if you look closely to the headliner it looks like somebody did a custom carbon fiber job on it so that's really cool it looks really nice so whoever did that did a really good job because normally it's just a black, uh, what do I call it? That fake leather crap. 
I don't remember. God damn it. Sorry, guys. But anyway, here it is. So many memories. The cheap plastics. The very thin plastics. You got a somewhat soft touch panel up here. All hard dash. Mine had the leather seats. I just couldn't help but stop and drool over this real quick. And I also forgot how small these center consoles were. Like, my God, look. This is my hand, and this is the center console. That's a small console. Now, if I ever found one of these Hyundais, and I could find, like, the owner's manual book and the uh, window sticker, I would snatch them up really, really fast. Here's that taillight from the Honda Insight. Somebody was trying to hide it. Typical. Got your hatchback coupe style. This thing was so nice when you were able to put the seats down and throw a whole bike in it and you should go bike riding. It was so nice. Because back when I was a teenager, I used to go riding my bike a lot. Just as something to do, exercise, you know what I mean? Oh, wow. Look. The original airbag label from when this was new. Holy crap. That is awesome. Can't see anything interesting in here aside from that. Uh, you do have some nasty OEM rear rear mats, but the fronts are already gone. Someone found them and snatched them up because those are extremely hard to find, especially nowadays. Like it was really hard five years ago, six years ago. It's got to be excessively hard in 2020. <sighs> Again, like I said earlier, with the bug eye headlights. It's such a beautiful design. It's unique. It's cool. A lot of people call it ugly, but I really, really want to argue argue that and disagree. You got your uh, beta 2-liter 4-cylinder shared in the Elantra, Kia Spectras, and all that other, all those other Korean small cars. Got your Catalyst sticker 2001 model year. You can tell that this one was pretty much unmolested, which is a very good thing because I'm fairly certain that a lot of them were abused, including mine. I hate to admit it, but I was 17, so bear with me. Still got the original muffler on it. That's, real, that's really nice. Uh, when I had mine, I did have the original muffler, but I cut it off and put a, a cherry bomb on it because I wanted it loud. I mean, it sounded pretty good for what it was, though, so there's that. Ah, such a beautiful car. So I guess you guys can guess what this car is next, right? Ready to take a peek? Volvo 240, looks like a DL, 1986. It has a very... In my opinion, beautiful blue color, although it's all faded now. Check out this old uh, Swedish car here. It has the very large headlights. Your little awkward engine there. I don't know why it's like that. Uh, it's probably a rear wheel drive. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing it's rear wheel drive. The interior in this is just absolutely gorgeous. Door panel has seen better days, but the seats. Oh. Again, like I said before, if these old Volvos, the seats themselves, with the colors and the patterns, beautiful. I just cannot stand those headrests. It just ruins the whole seat. Like, they should have had something that matches more with this fabric but they had to go with that cheap weird design i, I don't like it i am uh, it's it's hideous to me 
And to you Volks or Volkswagen, to you uh, Volvo fans out there, I'm sorry, but that's my opinion. You got your ancient climate controls. You got what appears to be storage. There's no gauges anymore. Someone took them out. It does come with a really ancient Kenwood stereo with cassette. Wonder if it has a year on it. It doesn't. I'm guessing it's maybe the same age as the car. I'm not sure. Has your old manual crank windows. Oh wow, that's easy to roll down. Got your weird door door handles again. Shot. Let's see if I can reach in and open it. Oh no, it's fucked. It ain't gonna open. Well, I guess while we're going around the car, we can uh, check out the trunk and see what's in it. Uh, I suppose we can dig around a little bit, but I don't want to go too deep into it. Old broken tail light. You got two donuts. This one, I'm guessing, is the original to this. That's probably from a different vehicle. Uh, this trunk does not appear to be a very deep one, but it does go in far. Uh, you see a little fuel pump there, oil filter, air filter, just a bunch of different garbage and parts. So, not a whole lot. You have your instructions on how to use your jack. Of course, it's in different language. I wonder if both these doors are broken. Oh, damn it. There's no way I can get into the back. I guess that's the only door that opens, guys. Just the driver front. Damn it. I was really hoping I can get you guys a good look at the back. Because this interior is in... Oh, no! Oh, okay. Oh, it scared me for a minute. Oh, fuck that. Alright, let's get you guys in there. So here's the back seat. Kind of sneak you guys around if the view is uh, trash. I do apologize, but I'm not about to climb over glass and car parts. I do wonder if there's anything in the glove box. <laughs> nope, nothing. Well, I guess this one is a wrap. Newest car of the day, guys. Or actually probably newest car of this channel so far for the junkyard walk arounds at least 2016 Hyundai Sonata barely four years old and it's done airbags are blown the frame is done these speakers actually look pretty good for factory I like the little pattern on it although it might be blown I don't know still has its gauge cluster in it which you could have like a little media center on it and stuff your little infotainment someone already took the radio so i'm guessing oh wait no nobody took the radio i remember now because i was just looking at this car not long ago before i filmed it i actually hid it under that engine cover so rain wouldn't get it so you're welcome uh junkyard for protecting your parts so uh people don't damage it anymore and it already's going on but you can tell all these parts are like practically brand new because this car has barely been into existence. February 25th, 16. The Sonata has involved, evolved so much just since 2012 alone because I saw a 2012 Sonata not long ago and I, I don't remember if I filmed it or not. I think I did. Oh no, I don't think I did. But uh, just in a couple years, the interior, everything just significantly got upgraded. Like, it's insane. I mean, aside from the seats being wet from the rain, because people, I guess, somebody needed all the windows. Uh, 
uh, the seats are getting wet, but the seats are still in good shape. So if somebody would hurry up and buy the seats, they can get themselves some clean seats. Same with the carpet. Carpet's clean. There's your GDI engine cover. And then here's the uh, factory radio I was talking about. It's a tiny little radio, but it's, it's cool. C2016 has uh, Sirius XM and everything, so that's fancy. There, see there, I'm protecting it. It's not gonna get hurt. Got your glove box. You know, if I didn't film that uh, 2012 Sonata, maybe I'll find it and film it for you guys next. But take a look at the interior of this one first. Good size center console. Materials in this nice in this car feel significantly nicer than if, than the uh, Tiburon. So, you know, Hyundai evolved a lot in the last decade, at least. Oof. You can check out and see what the damage on it is, and I'm sure you guys can already see it. That kind of gives you a clue. These broken welds can give you a clue. The bent frame, clue. And I guess somebody was in the process of cutting this one off, but for some reason stopped because they realized it's damaged. Engine's gone, transmission's just hanging. What a shame. It's a real shame. It's a 2014 Ford Fiesta. Yep, guys, 2014 Ford Fiesta in that beautiful blue color. Looks like it's the same exact blue color that uh, Ford Fusion I uh, filmed not long ago was. Really nice. Someone needed a door. They took the door. Curtain airbags blown. Both driver's side airbags are all blown. Fender is just crumpled. The frame looks tweaked. Possibly. It's definitely bent on this side though, that's for sure. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, 2014 for the Ford Fiesta had some interior changes including but not limited to the uh, gauge cluster and the infotainment no longer being red, they turned it into that uh, ice blue color that all the other Fords use. So 2011 through 2013, the Fiestas had the uh, the red gauges and everything, and the red uh, radio. 2014 was the first year that they used ice blue, so that's cool. Looks like they changed the design of the front seats a little bit. They used different patterns, different fabric. But other than that, everything else appears to be pretty much the same. And obviously this model of the Fiesta ran all the way up to 2019 at least. I don't know if they still make them, but... Here's a little quick look at a Fiesta. I filmed the 2011 a few months ago. Same video as the uh, Fusion I just talked about. So I'm not going to stick around too much, but I thought I'd let you guys take a look at it and learn the differences between the 2011 versus 2014. Now if you're in the market for a car and you're interested in a Focus or a Fiesta of this era, I recommend either buying the manual transmission model or learning the manual transmission, how to drive it and buy a manual transmission because the, the I think it's called the power shift transmissions in these are just junk. They're they're junk. And even though they had like I think they had like lawsuits and everything against them and people complaining, customer call-ins, everything, all the way up till 2019, 2020, Ford still never fixed the transmission issue. They just kind of kept building the same exact one. So I'm not sure why they were fully aware of the design flaw, but still continue to produce it. I mean, I get that it's an outgoing model and you just don't care, but at least fix the transmission so you, you can let your customers know 
that your car will last more than you know five ten years eclipse 1999 this era of the Mitsubishi Eclipse was my all-time favorite generation it's beautiful definitely better than the train wreck model that was in the 2000s it's so sporty it's beautiful It's just overall a lot cooler. Edge, I just like the sleeker 90s look. I know you can't tell now because the door panels are gone, but in the door panels, it's cool because you had like the, the the AC and heat vents flowing out to the door panel, and they were on the door panel. They weren't on the dash. So that's why you don't see the climate vents on the sides. Very similar to the Hyundai Tebron first gen that I just showed you guys not long ago. It had that design too. It was probably a popular look in the 90s, which I fully approve because that's it's really cool. It looks like it had crank windows and probably manual everything because it looks like a base model to me. And this Eclipse is not the only car that I really liked from this platform that they had from I believe 95 to 2000. They also had the Dodge Avenger, the Eagle Talon, and the uh, the Chrysler Sebring Coupe, which is a completely different chassis than the convertible. Completely different but they still use the same name. But out of all these cars on this platform, my favorite was the Dodge Avenger and the uh, Eagle Talon. Those both were my favorite, but if I, had to, if I was forced to pick between the Talon and the Avenger, I would definitely pick the Avenger. I just love the taillights on it. It just, it, it's just, it just gives you that vibe, you know, like that 90s vibe from Dodge. It had that, like, it was completely different on the back. Like, the taillights on the uh, on the Avenger at the time were very, very similar in design as the Dodge Stealth and the, uh, was it, I believe, the Viper. This door refuses to work and it's annoying because I really want to show you guys this side. Uh, these cars are pretty known here in Ohio to rust. I'm guessing it's pretty rusty. I can't really see. I'm just putting you guys under the car. But from what I could see just from right here, it's rusty. If there's one thing I wish that Ohio at least would do is instead of using salt in the roads to melt the snow and ruin people's cars, they should at least have some sort of substitute where it does melt the ice and snow but doesn't damage vehicles but uh anyway back to the car this is such a beautiful car guys uh so quick question for my viewers drop a comment down below right now i have two questions the first question on this specific chassis which of the three models or four models do you like the best the Eclipse, Talon, Sebring, or Avenger? Answer down below. Also, second question for my viewers. Which generation of the Mitsubishi Eclipse do you like the best? Did you like the original first gen? Do you like this gen? Early 2000s, late 2000s, early 2010s? Drop your comments, guys. Drop them comments. I miss the 90s, guys. I was born in the 90s, but I sure as hell miss them. I miss it with the cars and the the way the restaurants were. Like, Before I go on another rant, to the next car, please.
Here's a here's one that'll fill your sweet tooth for the uh, Acura and Honda fans. 1997 Acura Integra. Interior is stripped. The exterior is almost stripped. But this one still has the bug eye headlights in it because nobody has bought them yet. Check this beauty out. It's hard to believe that this car share the platform with the Civic of this era because the Civic is just so much more plain Jane and boring. Then you get to this one, and this one is just fabulous. It looks like it had leather seats in it at some point, but they're gone except for the seat backs. But uh, cushions gone, both front seats are gone. But it gives you an idea of how clean the floor pans at least were. Now I've noticed something up here. Uh, I don't know if I can open this, guys. Just give me a second to figure this out. Alrighty, so unfortunately I couldn't figure it out, but my solution was to stand on this wheel. So, I can reach you guys in here. Take a look at the non-existent cluster. You got your Acura steering wheel with your old school horn buttons. Now I noticed that these floor pants has these little light color squares on it. Were these repairs or was this just how they were made? I don't know. It looks like it might have had a manual transmission, judging this area here. That could be wrong, but it's so stripped you can't even tell anymore. But here's a view of the dash. You got your power sunroof, little map lights, your uh, dome light, pretty much all the essentials, right? Let's take a look in the trunk, see if there's something interesting in there. Well, there's a few of our missing door panels. There's a lot of interior parts in this car, guys. Um, and a lot of engine bay parts, it looks like. Uh, this thing, this thing has seen better days. I feel very, very sad for this one, actually. I personally would actually buy an Integra. But I would, honestly, I would kind of prefer the two-door over the four-door. But I will give the four-door some credit because it has that frameless top part. So when you open the door, it's just the glass and it looks really cool. So I will give the four-door Integra that. Like this, for example. It gives it that, that sleek look that these 90 sports cars or sports cars needed and it did the job right very very go oh crap <laughs> there's no window there whoops it doesn't matter anyway i mean the other windows gone pretty much but let's see what we're rocking with here here's our missing front bumper So, front bumper's still here. Oh, man. Well, if that engine was any good, it's no good anymore because all that water is in it now. Damn. That's a shame, guys. That's, it really is a shame. I could look at this all day, I think I really could, but unfortunately I don't have the time because I got other cars I would like to be filming. So say goodbye to the Acura Integra. Alright guys, here's a bonus car for today. We got a Buick Park Avenue. This big giant land yacht. It is a 1995 model year. Has a big, huge, huge trunk. You could fit people in the back here. This 
is an old school Buick, and the people who owned it are old school too, I guess. So, there's that. Got your old uh, Buick emblem there on your sides. You got your cigarette lighters and ashtrays on the back. Fake wood trim. Power windows. Door handles. And then you get in here, you get this nice plushy leather seat. With this uh, really, in my opinion, half-assed looking center. I don't even know how you open it. Oh, there we go. There's that, and your cup holders should fold and, I don't know, it's not moving. But anyway, look how roomy this back seat is, it even has rear climate. Huge, huge, huge car. But then you got your passenger side climate control so you can make stuff warmer or cooler on your specific side luxury power windows you got your tilt seat uh, some other tilt control button and then you got your forward backwards up and down uh, I guess these are all seat controls because it's all powered seats then you have this other power control here Park Avenue etched into the front seats and of course you have your classic uh, sagging headliner pushed up with push pins wouldn't be an old car without that uh, without that sorry guys I thought my uh, lens was all weird for a second all right so we got a light in here that's cool I guess Oh, it's for the glove box. You have a trunk release in here. Reset oil button in there. I'm not sure if this is the radio that came with it. I don't... I, I don't... I don't think it is, but... I don't know. I'm trying to see if I can find a date on it. But it looks like... It says November 4 something. I might be, it might be November 2004. So it's probably not even the radio that came with it. But here's your other center console there that you can fold up into a third seat. For those old school people, you got your uh, little ashtray cigarette lighter spot. You got your digital climate control, your radio section. And then on the top, you have this really cool Buick Park Avenue along the top center there. I'm not sure if there's any, like, warning lights or something in that area or if it's just a trim. And, of course, you go over here, you have your gauge cluster. Oh, and look at this. Lamp monitor. I guess it's supposed to tell you if your lights are going out or something. Then you got your lamp and your garage door opener, I believe. That's cool. I like that. And again, you get your own uh, ashtray. Wonder if there's anything in the glove box. Oh, oh I just opened it. Why did, why did I say that? Whatever, guys. I'm tired. Like I said in the beginning, I had a really long last few weeks. I had so much to do, and I still have a lot more to do. It's just I happen to have time today to do this, so... I mean, I do sort of apologize that I'm only doing this and not really other vlogs or videos right now. But... I might come out with another uh, project here real soon before winter time hits. I do have another plan with my car before all hell breaks loose with snow and ice and stuff. I gotta hold this door panel up so I can show you guys what's on it. It's all tore up, so there's really a whole lot that you can see, but 
has a Dyna Ride anti lock brake system there. You have your panel lights, twilights. What's a Twilight Sentinel? I don't know what that is. If anybody knows what this is, drop a comment below. I guess this is pretty much it for this car, guys. She's an old beauty. She's an old land yacht. Except for that. But that's fine. Uh, it's been a productive day. And thankfully the rain has stopped, but it definitely feels like the temperature dropped. So I'm going to get out of here and head home before I get freaking sick or something. Because I really don't want to get sick. Especially in this era where when you get sick, you know, doctors or something are going to automatically assume that you have something else. But I'm not going to talk about that subject here on YouTube. Alright, so it's time for me to leave. It's gonna be time for me to end this video now. I hope y'all like the video, like the content that I had to offer and show uh, show off today. If you like this video, please like the video, share it with your friends and family, and all your social media platforms, and uh, hit that subscribe button. That's the most important part. Subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I do an upload. Uh, and also for extras, if you want like extra fi uh, photos and live videos and other fun things, please, please don't forget to follow my Instagram page at SpecM Auto and my Facebook page, SpecM Auto on YouTube. And as always, guys, stay safe out there. Have a good day, and I'll see you all next time.